Good morning, April the 7th, 2017. This is CISG 113, Section 1, Information Security and Privacy. Today is day number 23 in week number 11. So, uh, actually, no, it's day number 22 in week number uh, 11. So, let's get started. Well, thank you very much for coming back. Um, I always switch back to week number 12, so I say it's week no, uh, day number 23, but actually if you look at it, it's day number 22, today is Friday in week number 11. We missed one day, it's this past Tuesday on April the 4th. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to remind you, your artifacts for learning contract number 3 is due by this weekend, April the 8th, April the 9th. You have two items to submit for the whole team. Each member of the team submit the same item. One is called a team collaborative report. The other is called a team collab collaborative report PowerPoint. Okay, the team collaborative report could be not more than 20 pages because you have to come up with a team problem. And from that team problem, you need to have three sub-questions. And for each sub-question, you have to work out the journalized OIA set and then Combine the three sets together with a summary of learning. So I give you a maximum of 20 pages, including the references. And uh, it is really up to how many team members write this report, but it's very important that if different parts of the report are written by different team persons, you need to indicate your identity beside the part of the report where you are involved, okay? Not only there will be the part for introductions by all the members, uh, question number one, by which member? Question number two, by which member? And question number three, by which member? And a summary by all the, uh, by all the members, and then um, pretty much the conclusions, right? So you need to include all the references, and then uh, you also need to produce a PowerPoint, which is not more than 15 slides, based on the report you produce, and each of the team members need to submit those items. Uh, very important items. Okay, just to remind you that this is the last collections of homework you need to uh, produce, and after that, uh, you should be able to understand how many points of the 65 points you earn, and you can also convert that into the 100% scale and got what grade you have. And if you're not satisfied with your grade, then you can proceed to do the portfolio in the very last uh, four weeks of the semester, actually starting from this week because the semester ends in April, I guess, the 30th, okay? So after April, um, there is nothing more you, you can do in this semester, and then uh, there's no final exam, remember that. So if you look at the title, or better say the topic for this week, uh, and for the remaining three and four weeks, it's called learning portfolio, okay? And the important method of learning for you is called IL, Intuitive Learning. Integrative learning. Integrative learning means you must have the ability to identify what you're supposed to learn in a particular course, given the time and themes of the semester. And so you need to put them together and connect those pieces of knowledge. You learn from working on this homework, you learn from working on the other homework, and put it in the perspective of what you have learned in the semester. Okay? So, and if you extend it a little bit further, you can also ask yourself questions of what you have learned in this course, can I connect what I have learned in this course to what I have learned from the other courses? This is a very important question. No one can tell you what you can learn after you spend some time with the topic. You are the person who should be in charge with what you can learn from a particular course experience. Now, as a teacher, it's very important that we lay out the important topics and resources on a week by week basis and guide you through the very important process of inquiry that you have to execute it on your own. In this semester, since this is week number 11, we went through three important learning contracts. We call each learning contract an important milestone. In the first learning contract, we got through the methods of learning called inquiry-based learning, IBL, which helped you to understand the process of questioning into something. 
after you have identified a topic of interest, including the writing of a journal, a record called notes keeping, by gathering information through the process of observations, O, by asking appropriate questions based on the observations you got, the I part, the interpretations, and including the expected learning called applications. Now that you have the knowledge, now that you have the process, how can you put them into practice to apply to different areas of your concerns? Application. So the old IA process is very much emphasized in the inquiry-based learning part of the first learning contract, which cover the first four weeks of the semester. Okay, so after the first learning contract on IBL, we went through three weeks of study on self-regulated learning, which is actually built on top of IBL to help you to question into something. But besides questioning the something, you need to have the goals delineated at the beginning of the process. You have to understand what your learning goals are, how much time you have, we call it a timeline, and then you need to devise an action plan which includes steps to follow in order to get things done. And then you also need to include in the self-evident learning a process called ongoing monitoring and evaluation, as well as timely adjustment of the work plan, so that you know if you are not meeting the goals you expect, you can change, okay? So we have three with um, explorations and training in a second learning contract after IBL, and that is called SRL. So after that, we give you, instead of another three weeks, we gave you four weeks because this is the week also included in the last study contract called the problem based learning. That is why when you switch from one person's work in the first learning contract to two persons' work called a peer work in the second learning contract to two peers' work in a team in the third learning contract, this week it's the conclusions of your teamwork. And so we just remind you that the team, each member of the team, need to submit the same team report and need to submit the same team power form to conclude the team problems, explorations in your team, among all team members. And you need to ask yourself this important question. What have I learned from this? Okay, you must have a team personalized question to start with and three some questions to do the follow-up and then references to refer to writing the report based on the journaling materials you got from each of the three sub questions based on the team first price questions. So it's very exciting and it's going to be very useful. And in the process of doing that, you must have a lot of team-based member-wise discussions. And so each week in each of the free learning contracts we've also given you tools on the Moodle environment where you can engage in a process of learning, IBL, SRL, and PBL. And now, when you look at week number 11, it is called IL now. It's, it's time for you to start gathering back what you learn in the first free learning contract and put it in your portfolio, okay, if you choose to and do it in such a way that you can earn bonus work, you can also reorganize what you've learned and how you're going to answer the question, what have I learned in the semester? This is very important. As I say, this is not like a traditional course in which you have a final exam. Uh, you need to study how many chapters and remember the answer to a particular question. No, we're not going to do anything like this, but you're given some time to work at the end of the semester, from now to work at the end of the semester, three or which time, for you to think back. What have you achieved in terms of the score, which will give you a grade in this course? What have you actually learned from this course, which will give you a very important foundation to study in the subsequent semester? Because it is believed, based on the feedback of previous semesters of students, they enjoy very much the foundations here because they can actually apply to other courses of learning. It's the learn-to-learn -learn process that is most important. 
the knowledge nuggets produced in this course in the context of information security and privacy, it's also important. That's why if you come to the learn and practice link here, LC001, LC002, and LC003, you can see a lot of systematic materials which will guide you from a novice to someone who knows something about this field. But have you made the best use of them? It's really up to you. So today, uh, before we get back to the regular class, I would like to call for the attention of the students who signed up based on last week's um, in-class participations. Uh, the first one is Carol Wong, the second one is Krius. But before that, I think I need to give Tracy a chance and uh, forgot your name. Koei, a chance to do your presentation. Yeah. Have you uploaded your PowerPoint yet? Yeah. Okay, so um, under week number seven. Okay, so let's go for it. I think it's week number seven because it's for your second learning contract. back next week, you each team will be also given a chance to present your team report, okay? So that it's also another important location for you to earn the in-class participation score. So let's see, Cody and uh, Tracy. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you. Hacker will use most of the program can directly invade the user's computer and damage, and then use this learning in the program. You can arbitrarily modify your computer's parameter settings, copy the file pitch your entire hard disk contents so as to achieve the purpose of controlling your computer. Due to due to the poor internet administration and weak network security, our information might be open, stolen or so even sometimes the information will be misused by the criminals. 
considering the book mentioned, we must enhance the honors when using the internet. First, when we need internet service, we should we should always log on those big legal websites. Second, if the service requires important private information, you should think twice before you talk in it. And this is three questions. And what is information fraud? How to prevent information fraud? And what is the impact of information fraud online? Uh, we will introduce what is information fraud first. Information fraud is the use of mobile phones, fixed telephones, and other telecommunications requirement to send false information for fraud fraudulent criminal activities. The main purpose practice for for consumer fraud, winning fraud and remittance fraud. Why we are choose this topic because information fraud is a serious problem for our daily life. It affects many things such as the company, economic, business, finance, financial. Also include many trade secrets and documents couldn't reveal. We are interested in this topic and think this topic is important for network. Has the certain influence. We we should learn more and to protect personal privacy prevent this situation appear. In the network times, a lot of things already change and it isn't as usual we think that's all. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you very much for helping us to understand your work in a second learning contract. We thank you so much for your invitations. Okay, now um, let me go back to those who signed for today's sharing, uh, we do have two speakers today. One is Carol Wong, the other is Cleus. But Carol, uh, have you update, upload your PowerPoint yet? Yes. Okay, let me refresh. Yes, thank you, Carol. I'll give you the time now. Okay, thank you. Good morning everyone. Today I want to share what I have learned from week nine. This is uh, in week nine we have saw some uh, few, uh, several videos about what is computer point and what is the effect Issues of hacking and cracking. There is there have some of the some of the videos that the link. What is computer crime? Computer crime is a type of cyber crime, and computer crime is an act performed by a knowledgeable computer user. Sometimes refer to as a hacker that illegally poses or steals a company's or individual's private information. And uh, as I mentioned about uh, cyber crime, computer crime is a type of cyber crimes, and cyber crimes encompasses any criminal act dealing with computers and network. It called hacking. Additionally, cybercrime also includes traditional crimes conducted through the internet. Do you know that cybercrime is one of the fastest forms of transnational crime? It has rapidly grown into a business that may exceed free, uh, that exceeds many money. And and it can and it is a serious crime. What are the ethical
practical issues in hacking and cracking. And uh, first, let me let me explain what is ethical issues. Ethical issues means that someone open the individual privacy to an unknown person and use skills to trade people's email password secrets. Hackers can be in terrorists in terrorists and predict the next movement. Um, I think that the ethical hackers have a that means they have a responsibility to society. Their activity should help to build and improve uh, the, upon existing technology. They should use their skills to help people, but not, uh, but not do the right, do, do the wrong thing. Uh, here is my reference. Um, after. Uh, week nine, I think the movie is very useful. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and um, I learned more about the cyber crime and the computer crime and uh, and what is ethical issues about. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carol. <laughs> Seems clear has not returned. Um, I just want to announce one more time because by the end of this week, you need to submit a very last homework, which for learning content number three, uh, it's about a team report. Everybody submit the same report, and it's about a team PowerPoint. Everybody submit a team PowerPoint. After that, I will return you the grade as soon as next week. And then you need to calculate how many points you earn out of the 65 points. Okay? And out of the 65 points, the in class participations accounts for 20 points. So, how do you get that 20 points? In order to get the 20 points, you need to have five times in class sharing. So, if you do not have five times in class sharing, it's time for you to sign up starting from last week, this week, next week, before the end of this semester. Otherwise, you will lose the 20 points there, and it will not be good for your final grade. Okay? And after that, so I highly recommend you that you sign up from the public online discussion forum. That uh, this is from last week. Okay? So, so far we have two speakers, including players. And this is signing up for today. But since today is going to be gone in a couple of minutes, so you better sign up for next week um, in class participations if you have not done so so how do you sign for next week you go back to week number 11 you go to the public online discussion forum and you can see that i've already sent out the call for students sign up for week number 12 day number 23 and day number 24. so if you do not have five times in class sharing it's very important that you do it here. Again, after you've done the in-class sharing, in order to create your 20 point, you need to produce a table in Microsoft Word or whatever, submit that table to me, which include five records, each one representing the day of the class. For example, today is day number 22. Day of the year, uh, this is April the 7th, 2017, and the YouTube name, which we are going to have YouTube name of the video, and you have to indicate from which minute to which minute you appear to talk about what, okay? So in that table record, you also need to include the PowerPoint of your presentations there. By then, you will have four points for each record, okay? And then for five records, you have uh, 20 points. And where do you put it? Besides using the Microsoft Word document, this is the question, Many of you asked me last week, so I just want to make sure you know that. So you go back to the Moodle site, okay? Starting from this week, week number 11. You can see that there is something called the e-portfolio space for you. Everyone, you can just come here 
get inside this particular space, okay, and start writing your pages by saying that, yes, I want to create a page, okay? But when you create your page, mind this very important part. You must create a page under your own name, okay? Let me show you how. You can see two links under this page, okay? Actually, three links. One is your own name, the other is your pair name, and the last is your team name, okay? Uh, at this point, I have not included the team name, but I'm going to do it today. No matter whether or not you see the pair or team, or your own name, you must choose the link under your own name because that is your personal e-portfolio space, okay? It's not your peer portfolio space, it's not your team portfolio space, you just need to choose your personal e-portfolio space. For example, if I were Afonso, I would choose Afonso, and then I would say create page, okay? So once you click create page, you will be presented with this box. You're very familiar with this box. You just need to type up the table here with five rows. Each row contains day number 22, um, April to 7, 2017, YouTube name. I appear from uh, zero minute to two minutes and my power pot, okay? So if you include this there as one record, definite name, I will give you four points. For five records, you've got straight 20 points, okay? This is the record in class sharing. So make sure you do it. How do you do it? Very simple. This is a table. You just need to say, I need, uh, for example, five column, and I need uh, maybe uh, a six row, something like this. And so you want to make sure your columns and have some orders, all right? So you insert. A table here and then type anything like this. This is a column zero one and then you type column zero two and so forth. Okay? So you can see that this is uh, something you can see the day of the class, day of the year, YouTube name, and then your um, minutes from the beginning, minute at the end, and then your PowerPoint, something like this. With that records, this is called the in-class participation. So at the very beginning, you might want to say in-class, my in-class participation record. So everybody knows that when I check this, I know that you have already fulfilled this requirement. I will honor you with 20 semester points there, okay? So it's very important. Uh, and then after that, you just need to say, I save it. I save it, okay? So after you save it, you can see something like this happening here, okay? Because now you cannot see the table because we did not uh, include some grids. So then maybe we can include some grids here. So right here, and we say table property, cell properties. And then we say the ones grids. We just need to play around with that. It's very simple now. You can see the table with grids. All right? Very simple. So this is how you're going to use e-learning stuff. Hi, Cleus. Are you ready to do your presentations? Okay, good. So this is how you're going to use this to train your score, okay? I will check your e-portfolio page to see if you have something like this. If you do have it, I'll honor you with a score, all right? So now let me go back to give Clears a chance to do your presentations. So my advice to you is to sign up in order to earn this chance to do your in-class presentation. Hi, right, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, today I want to talk about what is, what are the basic or interesting things uh, in and cracking. Uh, I divide them in three main points. Is the personal privacy and financial problem and security 
problem. Uh, but first, the problem, first, uh, there, uh, um, there are three problems. One is the uh, lack of priority information. That is the, the problem that always happens to us. Uh, for example, uh, you, may, you may get some spam email which it contains uh, the information that the strangers shouldn't know. For the another question, uh, another problem is spam emails. You always get a lot of emails because the, the, <laughs> the people who send them so uh, believe that the information they get can make you believe they are, uh, they are your friends or something else. And the last pr problem is information for. That is the problem that um, <coughs> we mentioned in the class. Um, because uh, the, the bad, bad person who get uh, your in, uh, personal information, so maybe you believe them, and they will um, set up information about them, and you will get the financial damage. But another problem is financial. Uh, a company who run a set maybe got the DDoS uh, attack or something else so that their service would not pro provide to the uh, normal customer. And sometimes some organization or company will get information hijacked so th they have to pay for them to get their information back. Uh, for the last uh, priority is the security problem. <laughs> Uh, the dark net or something else have some illegal tra trading so that some uh, something is very dangerous such as guns or uh, you can uh, you can pay another person to murder some people it's a very terrible thing so uh, I think there will be some illegal trading in security problems and uh, uh, and then the last thing is the cyber bullying. Because uh, mm, the, because in some website that you don't need to register for for account, so everybody can say what you they want to say. And this will be add some mental pressure to someone. And this is uh, this is the a kind of cyber bullying. And this is all the Thank you. Thank you, Clears, for helping us to see a little bit more on the interesting things behind this security problem, privacy problem. Okay, thank you, please. I highly encourage you that you have something very meaningful to share with the class. Uh, it is to your advantage. On the one hand, you can earn the score. On the other hand, you can just stimulate your fellow student to think along with you. Here are the ethical issues in hacking and cracking um, by players, the personal privacy, the financial problem, the security problem. Thank you. So let's get back to our class today. It's very useful to just take a good look at uh, what we have went through. Okay. So what we've went through, uh, this is week number 11. Uh, we lost one day on Tuesday because of the Qingming Festival. Uh, but we could always come back to the website to get an update, all right? So here we go. Uh, allow me to bring you to the attention of the, this very important week on IL Integrative Learning. Uh, I begin this class by introducing to you why we need this important topic towards the end of the semester. In the context of the semester, the first 10 weeks are the most important weeks because we use the first 10 weeks to spread out what you're supposed to learn method-wise, topic-wise, knowledge-wise, and we reserve the last four weeks to help you to put things together. In the traditional course, the way to put things together is to give you an exam, including the midterm and the final, to ensure you study, to remember all of these, so that you can reproduce your knowledge. But in reality, we discovered that um, in this course, the general education course, the focus is on how do you know, how can you make the best use of the knowledge you encounter? in a way that will benefit you, not just for the duration of this course, or grade, no, for the rest of your life, 
at least in your subsequent courses. So IL, or integrative learning, is a very important aspect within the end yourself. And it has close relationship with what we are talking about for the learning portfolio. A portfolio is basically a collection of your best work throughout your life, or better say, study for this semester, what you can accomplish for yourself. You keep a record of that, you keep the effort you devote to doing that, you keep the product you produce at the end of that, you keep a reflections of what you can do better if you can have a chance to do it again. So, in the learning portfolio, it's basically a refractive learning uh, practice, but in a sense that why do you need to do it? Because by practicing this, you can always learn to integrate different knowledge you obtain through different practices of your life. So, I've given you a very interesting discussions on professors telling students about the importance of integrative learning. Kindergarten kids, primary students, secondary students are doing integrative learning today. In Finland, they actually have abolished the system of you do physics, you do chemistry, you do biology, you do math. No, they have an integrated curriculum in which you learn something by doing project-based learning. So students identify what they need to learn through solving different daily living and learning problems. And then the teacher will guide them into learning. This part will need some knowledge in physics. So you need to learn how to do physics to just be able to understand how to get through. And because they spent hours and hours, years and years in primary schools and secondary schools, they accumulate a lot of such knowledge, which is done in an integrated manner so they will not forget them easily. But in the schools of this side, we divide the knowledge into different, very interesting compartments. And students come to a physics class to learn physics, so they come to chemistry class to learn chemistry, they come to math class to learn maps, and they learn only the skills, not the integrated thinking. So they always have a problem to regain knowledge of how they could put things into perspective. Well, the only way that happens is use examinations. The way you try to demonstrate not as good as examinations, write a, write a paper, answer the best question with your best answer, you got 100%, you got an A. That's the way of learning. But this is not the way we are supposed to apply the learning. So we discovered that kids from the Asian countries, particularly this area, are very good at examinations. They're very smart. When it comes to the creative learning stuff, problem solving, we are far behind many kids who grow up in an environment in which they continuously have the courage to explore the world of curiosity. Okay? So this is the, the, the kind of things um, integrative learning can address. One of the questions students often ask in a traditional classroom is that, what am I learning? I don't know what I'm learning. Because in the past, when they learn something, there's always an exam paper or homework paper for them to write to express the knowledge, building up the answer to a particular question. But that is not the way living and learning is all about. So it's very interesting uh, that uh, we bring you to the ideas of integrative learning. Let me see if I can bring you here called documenting the cell. Okay? Documenting the cell, integrative learning and e-portfolio. So how do you document your personal development? Okay, let's see if I got this one. This is a conference presentation by Dr. Tracy Penny Light. She's a very famous person in helping students to learn and demonstrate how to learn through something called e-portfolio. 
Let me see if I can fast forward a little bit. It's a very important thing for each one of you. If I were allowed to give you a little bit of hint, you all know that when you go to look for a job, you need to be PSCV, right? A resume. And you all know that if you could produce a good CV, people would get impressed and you will gain a chance of interview. That means you have a chance to do something that is very much what you want. In today's world, people will ask you for not just what you put in your CV, they are interested in knowing that you have the real experience that it's what is expected. Okay, that's it.
who have come through the system and you know, I was given my teenage daughters, I really do know what I'm talking about because I have lived this and I have experience and they don't believe me until they fail and they say, oh right, mom, you were right. Um, but we, we've had these experiences and so we've, we've experienced higher education and we know um, what we might get out of it. And I think we can do a better job of eliminating for students what that might look like as well. Um, you know, without them feeling quite so pressured. And, uh, and then hopefully end off with just a few notes about um, where I think higher education is going and, and how we might draw some concepts um, by Marshall Baxter Cole around self-authorship. So as you already heard um, from DJ this morning, the context of higher education is definitely changing. Um, we are increasingly using technology and uh, you know, obviously this is not going away. We are going to have to think about ways that we can really embrace Okay, it's also a good time to stop and uh, because of the bandwidth. Have you heard the message? Okay, if you've heard the message, that will be good enough. You, why do you have to come to college? Okay, everybody knows that you need credentials. If you have credentials for a university graduate, you are far more well prepared than someone with a secondary school certificate. But we all know that in the credentials attached to university education, it's not just the credential itself that comes. Today is the experience and the knowledge, footprints you experience throughout the college year that is very important. And also, we also have this important idea of, people always ask you, what do you want to do after your college education? It's about your career choice. Now, how do you know that this is something that you really want to do? Frankly speaking, when you're in this, your first years in the university, it will be quite different from your perspective when you are already on the fourth years of university. You have changes. You have different perspective shifts. So how do you know if you're doing the right things or have the most objective picture of who you are. This is a very good response. How do you document yourself, your development through the years, particularly college years, in such a way that you can understand this is really I'm committed to do. Uh, I think this is a very good piece that you can go home and watch it through uh, here, perhaps because of the bandwidth problem or because of my computer's problem. Uh, we just stop at 11 minutes and 15 seconds. But I believe uh, Tracy Penny Nice video for the rest of this as a talk to share with the teachers there. It's going to be a very inspirational video for you to turn on why you need your own portfolio. And actually, if you live in a residential college, you're obliged to complete your portfolio after your first years of residence there. So it's very important for you. Okay. Uh, let's take attendance for today first before we come back to the second topic. Koei, <coughs> you're here. Thank you. Uh, Anson is not here. Tracy, you're here. Welcome back. Alfonso, you're here. Uh, Neon, you're here. Franco, Franco is not here today. Clears, you're here. Shadow, you're here. Jerry, you're here. Thank you. And Carol Wong, you're here. Henry Wong, you're also here. Okay, and then uh, Marco, thank you. And then Maggie, you're here. Vincent, you're also here. And then Jeff, you're here, right, Jeff? Thank you. And then Henry New, you're not here today. Don't be in. You're here, thank you. And then is Carry On, you're not here. Carol Powell, you're not here today. And then Nicholas, Nicholas is not here today. But Gabe, you're here, thank you. And Jose, you're here. And Tiger, you're here, thank you very much. All right. You're here, right? Yes. The Carol Powell is not here. Carol Wong is here. Yeah, it's so okay. So, it's very good. 
In Arkansas, if you're in attendance, you have uh, five bonus points for the semester if you got more than 80% of it. these days are not learning as much as they should be in school, and it's not their fault. When students are taught using a class-by-class, subject-by-subject basis, they learn less than students who are taught using what's called an integrated curriculum. An integrated curriculum places less emphasis on teaching just the subject, for example, when students write stories only in English class, and more emphasis on the connections that exist among different subject areas. Students could, for example, also write stories in science class, but the stories would have a scientific theme. When students are pushed less to memorize and recite, and more toward understanding the connections among various subject areas, learning increases, as do their chances for success in the workplace. Yes, my letter. More and more, businesses are looking for workers who can solve problems. In order to be successful problem solvers, workers must be able to integrate various types of information to come up with a solution. An integrated approach to teaching helps students learn to put a variety of ideas together. Make sure to point out to children the connections among subjects you see in the home and ask them to describe how different things are related. Integrated learning works at school and at home. This is Education Plus. One more time. I hope you got the message. Now, if you really got the message, so let's go back to our website and ask yourself, do you understand why we divided the whole semester 14 weeks into three semester contracts? And for each semester contract, we did provide this very interesting link. Okay, let's go to week number one. <coughs> How many of you have actually visited this link, Learn and Practice? Okay. Okay, let's visit this link. If you visit this link, you see that we have all the important materials provided in the traditional classroom, but I specifically well, will not use them as the basis of our everyday classroom, because these are things with your ability to definitely can manage yourself. These are divided in topics, okay, very specifically Computer security, introduction, cyber stalking and abuse, denial of service attack. Okay? If you read through this PowerPoint, you got the major ideas, but these are divided into areas of concerns. And then we also have the what we call the notes here. Okay? In comparisons with the PowerPoint, we have the notes, which are taken directly from this book in a traditional format. But the reasons why I don't use them, because I want to use videos those that coming from everyday life to stimulate your concern. And then when you have your concern when you're writing your journals, definitely, if you're smart enough, you know that you might want to do some of this. Okay? So these are what we call the, in a sense, is integrated because the support for your learning, it's already there. But I do not want to use them in such a way to make it too traditional. So you have to understand that. What about the second learning contract, if this is the first one? In the second learning contract, you see that, again, we have three more topics. Malware, hackers, and industrial espionage in cyberspace. And this is a very interesting topic here. I'm operating my company. He is operating his company. How should I know what they are producing in such a way that I can go ahead with it? And we know the very interesting picture between Apple's and Samsung. And now it's between Samsung's and Huawei <laughs> in, in China. Industrial astronauts. How do you anticipate this? And interesting is speaking inside China. Samsung was accused of stealing the intellectual property of Huawei. Uh, when well, indeed is the leader of the world. Uh, so have you seen something like this? It's very interesting. So what about learning contract number three? All right? So let me come to number three, continue with this thing with encryptions and the security software as well as the policy and security, and including the topic called cyber terrorism and information warfare. 
many of you talk a little bit about that, and I hope you benefit a lot from those what we call the systematic knowledge that we expect you to be aware of, but in this course, as we say, it's a process-based learning course. It is not content, it's the king only. So we bring this to your attention because if you are following what we are suggesting you to do in class as well as through this website at home, you, have, you can learn a lot of things in this course. But the only motivation for you to go to learn is not because you have to submit the homework. It's not because you have to write the term. It's not because you have to write the final exam. It's because you have an intro. Because all the midterm final and what we call homework line are not needed in this course. Okay? So the course requires you just to write the journal, to share your thinking, and to produce in-class sharings in the form of simple presentations. This will bring to your attention that hopefully you could stimulate a little bit of your own thinking and interest to look into what exactly is happening in the world, okay? In the context of information security and privacy. Okay, I think it's good enough to bring up this form. So with number 11, also like you to pay attention to the following, because you are in college. I do not know if you have ever seen this. I thought that was a fascinating answer. Okay, you want to take off the hoodie? No, look, no, and tell me what you are, sir. Yeah. There's a group of women in the audience that wish you would. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Girl? Whoa. All right. All right. Um, can you explain what this instant personalization thing was that you did and why you did it? What was the, what's the value of it to your users? Maybe I shouldn't take off. Yeah. This is a great moment. After you watch this intro, tell me what have you understood yeah. about it? Um, what do we mean the mic? You know who this guy is, right? Do you know who this guy is? Sorry about that. Yeah. I don't think you've ever seen this interview in another context. Yeah. Like, oh, this is a lot of light experience. Yeah, no, it's a thick hoodie. We, it's, um, it's a company hoodie. We print our mission on the inside. What? Oh, oh really? we're on the inside of the hoodie, everybody. Thank God. What is it? Making the... Making the world more being connected. Oh, my God. It's like a secret Ooh. vault. Weird symbol in the middle that is probably for the Illuminati. Oh, 2010. No, it's 2010. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Very Dan Brown on the. So what's the what is instant personalization and why did you do it? What's the sure. Point? So I mean, so what we're what we're trying to do is um. Okay. May I ask? Do you know who this guy is? You know him, right? Is Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook. Okay, this is an interview probably uh, that was conducted in the year 2008, <clears throat> all right? And this is one of those interviews you can hardly find anymore because after this interview, he never accepted interview of this kind anymore. In this interview, he was being questioned by two of the most experienced journalists on the way he wants his own company, Facebook company, okay? And he's so much embarrassed in this interview that he he got a lot of sweat because he, he really could not expect him how to answer questions at this time. So if you have time, of course, you go home and read that interview and watch it several times, and you understand the implications. Now, since this is not a long interview, we just got through almost half of it, and I'll let you finish the rest. You know, we. We're building Facebook in this way, what we think is pretty different from most other sites. Right? It's a lot more engaging than, than you know, almost every other website out there. And we think that the reason for that is that it's designed around people, fundamentally. Um, you know, when you look at newsfeed, uh, we've done these interesting eye-tracking studies where, you know, to see how people use the site, and unlike most applications, 
people don't browse through looking at navigation, they browse through looking at people, right? It's like you, you Okay. And I'm going to this is why, okay? And you can continue to watch something like this, but okay, let me bring out the Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg and his wife Priscilla Chan made headlines. Let me bring out this form, okay? <clears throat> We are talking about in this particular instance on um, integrated learning, okay? Integrated learning in such a way how you put things together. And I, I believe in, he's a very successful person. So he's, he, he, he dropped off from Harvard because he did something interesting inside Harvard. And then he found the Facebook company um, and then he got very successful with uh, buddies from Harvard who also did not finish their graduate studies and then he was fired uh, in court because um, two twin brothers accused him of uh, by stealing their ideas to form a company on which is called Facebook but the, the original idea before Facebook was actually come from the twin brothers of their colleagues or something like that. And after he had successfully uh, built a company in California, uh, he went through the um, ups and downs, and he became successful, and then he accepted this interview uh, in Christ, and then he went to the interview when he was not prepared to answer questions asked by the two interviewers, very famous journalists. As ever the first time you ever seen him sweating all the time, you do not really understand how to respond, but he cannot escape, he was dead. And then for that couple of minutes, you can see how actually uh, did not know how to respond to himself. And what does this have to do with integrated learning? Okay, the question is, what does this have to do with integrated learning? It's a very important life experience that, that is summed in front of you. A very famous person, maybe, and ever since so that, and we know that he, he did not accept any interviews like this anymore. And it had increased several pieces over there. Okay, so when we say documenting yourself, okay, using a portfolio, this is part of his permanent records. Okay, what does it mean? What does it mean for you? All right, so finally, I just want to say that um, it's really a privilege to be able to study at the University of Macau because we are actually very much in part of the world famous university to provide you the facility to do learning. Oh, wait, Budo and Mahara. So allow me to show you this. Well, at the moment, we're allowed them to Moodle. Now we've got to look at all my stuff. 
and under my stuff we've got the Mahara Deep Portfolio. Click and straight into Mahara. I haven't needed to log in. Because Mahara integrates with Moodle, deployment has been made more straightforward. We've been Moodle since 2003, 2004, open source. Mahara comes along as an ePortfolio open source. We didn't have to go out and go to tender, spec it all out, and then do it. We could put it up there at really no cost at the time, try it out, get a few people to play with it, see how it works. It's very bottom up initially, and then you need to get the buy-in from senior managers for the resources to follow. Now it's embedded and it's real, and we can't afford to have failures. Now the investment is following, and that seems to be a cycle with the way that we've done things here. It's a strange model, but it's the one that gets academics engaged and involved. In the School of Law, Mahara is used to enhance employability and develop professional skills. Where students are developing their skills of interviewing and advising, they've filmed each other um, role-playing uh, an interview as though they were a trainee solicitor in practice. Um, they can then upload that video onto Mahara, and track their progress through the year. In the School of Education, using ePortfolios to support research assignments is helping to spread the word about Mahara. They go into school, they carry out some action research and then they have to present for an assignment. By using Mahara to get them to present for the assignments, um, because it's such a wide marking team, many people who work in the, in the School of Education mark on that module, they then became exposed to Mahara through accessing the students' work. The experience of Birmingham City University has shown that the benefits of ePortfolios need to be clearly understood. Where a member of academic staff has designed learning activities that require the use of an ePortfolio, students really appreciate that. Where an ePortfolio has been used as it's there, get on with it if you want to, I don't think students see why they should do it, and I don't think students realise the value of it. And they're confused about why are we doing this, why aren't we using Facebook? This isn't Facebook, there is a need. Did you hear, did you hear this very important statement? If we just say that the system is over there, go and try it out, students would not conscious of why they need to use it. The, the reason why I'm giving you all of these is to make sure you understand the values of documenting your portfolio is your learning career and it, you need a tool to make it to make sure you can get through the people in a professional way. And so uh, it will be a wonderful opportunity that you have the experience of using Udo to figure out what is expected in the portfolio on your own page. And during your rest of the hours beyond this class throughout the semester, you can put them into your own Mahara pages. Where is your permanent pages at the University of California? Okay, I think I'm going to stop here. Uh, you need to understand why you need to do things like this. And so, I hope to see you back here next Tuesday with more of you signing up for the in-class sharing. Don't lose your points, okay? Thank you very much for today's class, day number 22, CISG 113. Section 1, Information Security and Privacy.